wanted to start by asking um, what trends you see at the moment occurring when it comes to what VCs are looking for. There, uh, in, in some of the applications, there's uh, communication tools have become something pretty hot recently. Uh, company Slack has reached a billion dollar valuation in less than two years. And uh, so anything that has this very high fast growth is becoming very interesting. In terms of, I mean, that's what the VCs always look for, things that they have big markets and have uh, very fast growth. Um, in terms of technologies, there are a lot of investments right now starting to happen in, in uh, virtual reality, Oculus uh, stuff, and, and uh, uh, what else? Uh, more, there, there's, I've been seeing uh, a lot of interesting things in uh, Internet of Things, hardware, wearables, and things of that nature as well. So there's still a lot of, of course, all kinds of software. I mean, enterprise software is also, uh, I mean, that's what Slack is. This is like web to all catching up with enterprise and communication tools of that nature. But it's still also uh, productivity tools and, and uh, you know, logistics and, and complex is still pretty, pretty interesting. Do you think those are sectors that VCs in the West can find in the Middle East? Is that something that can be found in the Middle East at the moment? Yeah, so if we go back to your question, I mean, the, what VCs look for is, is disruptive technologies that's going to change some industries and, and have some in, in, in massive markets. And, and, and these disruptive technologies could definitely possibly come from anywhere. Uh, you know, another recent company is. Uh, uh, Leap Motion, which is virtual uh, uh, reality, augmented reality, yeah. something that would have like an object that we could be both floating here and here between the floors, you can see what side it is. Pretty crazy stuff. This is technological disruption, technology uh, breakthroughs in some cases. And, and those could be happening uh, from uh, great universities anywhere. A lot of uh, good scientists that they're cracking some problems and then they found it an interesting application to go with it. I mean, I've seen those types of things not necessarily exclusive to uh, US or Silicon Valley companies. What ends up happening though is many of those companies find their way to uh, maybe uh, set up shop in there or at least have presence. And we've seen that with a lot of Israeli companies as well. So there is like an interesting uh, uh, product that's been built to access the US market, and that's what the VCs want to interested in, they invest in something that they can also uh, expand in the US market and, and uh, participate in, in helping grow in it. Um, those technologies could come from anywhere, so there's no reason for there's not to be someone here at AAB or any other university that comes up with great technology and, and build a team here and build a product here, but maybe put the business uh, unit and operate as an American company. In your uh, sort of looking throughout the globe for these new startups, where at the moment would you say is producing the most innovative ideas? Uh, innovative ideas uh, coming uh, from all around. I see good attractions uh, coming out of. Uh, a couple of places recently in uh, Toronto area in Canada, next to Waterloo University. There's a lot of great things coming out of there. A lot of startups giving, studying there and, and growing. And another region that I've seen a lot of very interesting startups is uh, Scandinavia in general, like the Nordic country, and specifically Sweden. Uh, Sweden definitely a lot of activities coming much faster right now on the startup scenes. And, uh, good products and, and things that they're really involved with. Going back to the Middle East, what are your general thoughts on the startup ecosystem? So it's a it's a an early and um, definitely not mature uh, ecosystem. Like, uh, but but it's it's similar to uh, various uh, places that I've seen in Latin America and, and Europe as well. Uh, you know, places like maybe. Uh, Argentina and, 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 Peru and uh, uh, Chile. There's some some activities and there's interesting small communities. It's not very well concentrated and it's not very uh, well nurtured. And uh, 
but but these things are, are changing very fast. I mean, I've, uh, since I start uh, black box and start traveling in the last four years, I've seen a lot of changes uh, globally in, in many places where where the Middle East was right now. Uh, even like Germany didn't have much of what's going on today. That was you know significantly faster things are changing. So. Um, we need good role models, we need uh, success stories, and I think um, the, um, a lot of people's stories and, and, and many people that you think that happen here in ArabNet get examples to, to, uh, to highlight and produce. Do you think VCs in the US or the West in general are looking more towards the Middle East? The short answer is they're, they're not yet looking at the Middle East. Very, very few of them are. Uh, looking at the Middle East as the Arab market with the you know, 150 million internet users in the Arab market for a million or whatever. Uh, some of those numbers are some, some VCs are uh, trying to pay attention to as a uh, big market to tackle. Uh, but it's uh, still, still viewed where like uh, Brazil and, and uh, China you see VCs setting up things in India where there is significant more scale. So VCs in Silicon Valley do not look at, there's tremendous amount of deal flow and interesting opportunity coming to them to Silicon Valley. Um, the few who are starting to look outside of Silicon Valley, Google Ventures setting up a $100 million uh, fund in, uh, in London, and, and it, this has been done also by uh, Index and Axel, I mean, Okay, but Axel uh, uh, Ventures Partners and uh, a few other firms and, and firm and DFJ, they've been setting up global offices, but I don't think any of them yet have set up in, you know, this is like top tier VCs with billions of dollars under management. They have big funds that they, they set up offices in, in China and India and, uh, and in Europe, but they haven't yet come to uh, with, with a specific focus in the Middle East. The smaller for, uh, funds are probably starting to pay attention to. Right, that's all I have to ask. That's Great. That's my questions. All right. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I really appreciate it. Very welcome.